Well, I was away, but I'm back now, and I'm inspecting the tanks. They're being tank taken care of by a friend of the family. Everything's looking good. And uh, while I was away, I watched uh, over 650 of you responded to uh, this survey. You can see it right here, this survey on your, your biggest fear in fish keeping. And I was kind of surprised, kind of surprised at the outcome. I mean, t for me, I think, I, th I thought I was going to see more like, like fish die off, uh, things of that nature. But uh, what, what came up was the flood, you know, water all over the floor. And, and, I, and I'll tell you, uh, ever since I, I, I went to a garage, see this floor here? This is just, a, this is just concrete, just a concrete floor. And it, ha it has a little bit of a blue paint with some speckles on it. But I don't worry. I don't worry about uh, a flood anymore. And I didn't realize how much stress that was creating for me until I switched to a room where I didn't have to worry about the floor anymore because of, uh, of water damage. So uh, that was been a real, a real reducer in stress. So uh, thank you to all of you who answered on that survey, who, who uh, shared what their biggest fears are. The flood, go figure, 650 answers. And let's, let's take a quick look at the fish. And while doing it, I'll give you a couple tips on how to avoid the flood. When you look at the tanks, you're going to be able to tell that I've been away for a little bit because they're not as clean as I would like them to be. You're going to see a little bit of brown on the glass. You're going to see like down here around the bottom. But look at this muck down here. You see this muck here in the substrate? All in here? I don't mess with that. That's good stuff. That's living bacteria, and that bacteria and muck down there is helping to keep these fish nice and healthy. You know, water can look real clean and not be healthy. It's, it has to have, uh, it has to be alive. The water has to be alive. And one of the ways you, you make it alive is by just letting, letting things grow in the substrate. And, you know, I'm a, I'm a deep, deep substrate guy. Look at that geo. Geos are beautiful. I just think they're so unusual looking. And they're really built for sifting in the sand. These are supposedly Surrey Menensis. This one right here is an AC Heckli coming up to check us out. The uh, electric blue Carls are doing well in here. And they're, they're out in the back there. What really surprised me was how they changed color when they went into this tank. Not sure if it was because of the tank mates or the coloration of the substrate and the uh, background, but they became much more of a of a dark dark blue as opposed to the lighter blue. Not sure if you can tell on the camera, but they do look a lot darker than they looked when they're in the 55 gallon. Here's the 55 gallon planted tank with hornwork, hornwort island in the middle. I think I'm going to have to thin it out again, especially when it starts to get around the filter. Now, if you want to avoid the flood, probably my, my biggest tip is first and foremost, you see the water line on this aquarium? Check it out. See how even it is all the way across. What that means is that my tank is level. And that means that there isn't an unusual amount of uh, pressure on one of the uh, on the seams of the tank because it's uh, you know because it's leaning to one angle. So keeping your tanks level is an important aspect of making sure that your tanks don't end up end up actually putting too much pressure on one of the corners and and springing a leak. So keep your tanks level, check your water line. It should be perfectly across, perfectly horizontal. And uh, I use shims and pieces of tile, and, and I use a level when I set up a tank to make sure that my tanks are absolutely level. Check out all the little babies. The babies are actually uh, putting on some size, and there's always a new batch in there. You look in there, you'll see real teeny ones. And Northfin, in that last batch of food that they sent me, they sent me some of this uh, Northfin fry starter. Northfin fry starter. It's like a little, 
it's almost like a powder. You can see it here in one of the baggies I left for the person taking care of my fish. It's like a like a talc powder and uh, the little fries, little fries love it. And there are tons of them in here. I don't think I'll ever have to buy another live bear, but I probably will anyway. This hornwort is doing great in my hospital tank. Siamese algae eater living a good life, but it's thriving. Obviously loves the light. Snails like it too. They're hanging out in it. And look at all those fry. Holy moly. Check out the betta fish. Another tip I can give you to avoid the flood. Another tip is when you're filling your aquariums, do not do anything else. Don't be texting. Don't be checking your email. Don't get on a phone call. Because it is amazing how fast your tank will fill up when you're not paying attention. So definitely uh, try not to do anything. He flares up at me. Oh, he's such a tough guy. Really pretty fish. Hey, there's, a, there's one of the uh, bristle nose plecos. Oh, they're getting big. These guys were about a quarter inch to a half inch when I first got them. Been growing them out. There's two of them in here. And there's some coolie loaches also. Oh, my goodness. I think I just saw a baby pleco. There's a baby pleco on that piece of wood back there. I'm not even sure if you can see it. That is amazing. My plecos had babies. That is so cool. That's never happened before. That is so awesome. Hey, good job there, buddy. Little stud. You're hearing this for the first time. I've never noticed it before. You're seeing it on the video. All right. That's good news. All right. Let's go over here and check out the 210. Another thing is if you're going to get into, into a canister filters, do yourself a favor and keep them in a uh, plastic Rubbermaid container and use a water alarm. I've never had a canister leak on me, but better safe than sorry. So I keep mine in a Rubbermaid and uh, I have what's called a, a water watchdog alarm system. Wow, look at that guy. Holy moly. That's a pretty fish. Now this, this lamp, this, uh, this light on this tank is on a timer. It's almost 10 p.m. and it's starting to ramp down. So this tank is a little bit lightly lit. But don't get into sumps unless you really understand how to set the water value, you know, the water height. But once you have that down, your sump is never going to overflow. So you're never going to have a flood. The only way to overflow is if you have a crack or if you overfill the, uh, overfill the tank. But you know, that, that, that can happen with anything. And again, just be sure that when you're filling a tank with a sump, you fill the tank until you have the sump up to the level you want it to. Then start that sump running and then keep filling it until it goes to the water line that you want. Look at these guys. You got to love the colors and the shapes on African cichlids. They're such unusual fish. Look at that gar. With those beautiful lips. A torpedo of a trout. Beautiful uh, Buchochromis rhodesii yellow with a slope in the forehead. This big Fusco. Just a big stud. And a little little uh, little shrimpy Venusus. Come on, man. Start growing, dude. You're a Nimbochromis. Look at that Coingi. Can you believe that? The marks on his body, just absolute. Whoa, look at that sand diver. Holy moly. Camera hogging. Bucacromis spectabilis. 
beautiful fish. Very underrated in the hobby. Look at that hawk. Look at that dark blue in the face of that hawk. Aristochromus Christii, beautiful fish. Come on up here, hawk. There he is. Check him out. He's got a little black mustache. A little er, Earl, Earl Finn. Or Earl Flynn. I'll call him Earl Finn. All right. Well, it's good to come back and have all the fish healthy. And uh, these cute little autos. What the cutest little fish. I'm so excited to have baby, uh, baby plecos. Never had a baby pleco before. But look at this little auto. They're so cute. I got a whole bunch of them in here. Rummy noses are doing great. Lemons. Red tail rasboras. Little Cory cats. My oddball whip tail. Red tear. He doesn't want to come out. Just sticking his snout out. Do you see him? Just got his snout sticking out, sticking out of that cave. Come on, show us your entire beautiful body. Eh, he won't. All right. So there you go. You got a tour of the fish room and some tips on how not to worry about flooding. The best tip I can give you about flooding is uh, put your tanks in a place with a concrete floor. That's the, <laughs> that's the best tip. And uh, the second, of course, is uh, maybe, maybe keep your tanks on a rubber mat. Uh, next, pay attention when you're uh, filling. Don't do anything else because you will get distracted and ultimately you will you will spill everywhere. And uh, understand sumps before you start using them. Keep your canisters in a plastic container and, uh, and keep your aquariums nice and level so that you uh, don't put too much stress on the corners and create a possible uh, a separation in the silicone and the adhesive. All right. Hope that helps you to prevent the, the, the obviously dreaded flood that can occur. And uh, I'm going to go back and see if I can see, see some more baby plecos. All right. That's it for me. Hope to see you on Saturday for the cichlids and coffee live stream. And if you'd like to support the channel, consider becoming a Patreon, a Patreon uh, supporter. It starts for as little as $3 a month. I'll put the details in the description. You rock, my friends. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. I think I see one right there. Yep. Looks like a little tadpole. Oh, there's the betta. Oh, there he goes. Oh, my God, he's cute.